on its system. Our correspondents there from across the globe. Well, Uday Mittal from the Data Security Council of India, India joins us now from Delhi. Uh, Mr. Mittal, thanks so much for joining us here on the program. Just tell us a little bit more about this impact on India. We know India's largest container port in Mumbai has been hit. Yeah, so Yalda, so far what we know is that the JNPD, the Jawaharlal Nehru port terminal, has been the victim of the ransomware attack, the, uh, this recent Petyar and ransomware attack. Now, uh, so far, this is the only uh, big impact that we have known in India, and that too came from the company Maersk, which operates that particular terminal. Why do uh, you think that this port I is the only one that's been hit? Uh, so in India, that is the only port that has been reported. Having said that, there are all, uh, as per the various media reports, there are 75 terminals that are operated by Maersk that have been shut down across the world due to the ransomware attack. So it's not just India uh, that has been impacted. Uh, there are many countries across the world that are facing the same uh, sort of situation. Do we know what the motivation behind this is? Uh, the motivation behind the attack? Yes. Uh, all right. So, uh, as we have seen uh, in the last month also, there was an attack called WannaCry ransomware attack. And uh, the basic concept of ransomware is that they encrypt the files and then they demand some amount of money to decrypt the files. Now, recently, the ransomware has, you know, given a business edge, a business advantage to the malware authors, wherein they can infect the machines and then get money out of it. So, business angle is one of the uh, reasons I could think of wherein uh, you know they can infect large organizations and affect their operations and not only operations it has a financial impact also it has a reputational impact also and these organizations are often uh, you know uh, in a hurry to get their systems back so that they can mitigate their losses and they are willing to pay ransom also though the recommended advice is not to pay the ransom because even after paying the ransom it's not confirm that the uh, malware author would uh, give the decryption keys or the infection won't return. But there are so many unanswered uh, questions, aren't there? I, I mean, we saw something similar last month with the uh, wanna cry a cyber attack. I mean, why do you think companies constantly appear to be caught by surprise when something like this happens? Uh, see, in my opinion, this shouldn't be a surprise because the vulnerabilities exploited by either WannaCry or uh, Pattaya ransomware have been known since March 2017. So in March 2017, Microsoft came out with a patch MS-17010, which fixed that particular vulnerability called Eternal Blue, uh, which WannaCry as well as Pattaya is exploiting. There's also, this, so, there's also this vaccine now. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah. So. Uh, the vaccine we are talking about, so in the last uh, ransomware attack, so it's basically a domain name uh, which the malware send it, sent a request to and if it was able to reach, it would execute and if not, it, would, it won't execute. Now, it, in this particular attack, we don't have this kind of kill switch. What we have is uh, akin to a vaccine wherein we have to disinfect or, you know, put this workaround on machine-to-machine -machine basis. There is no way to deploy it uh, at a remote location and then stop the infection. So in this particular workaround, a particular uh, file has to be created in C Windows folder. And when the malware executes, it checks if the file exists. If the file is existing, it won't execute. We'll have to leave and it. The system will get infected. OK, yeah. thanks very much for your analysis there. That was Uday Mittal joining us there from Delhi. Let's go to.